All right, so this is a demonstration of uh, how KPatch is working right now. It's in working end to end. Some of the scripts that are going to wrap the whole process to make it easier from a user's perspective aren't in place yet, but uh, all the code to actually do the diffing between the objects, creating the kernel modules um, that can actually be loaded in the kernel are all done. So uh, I'll run through it real quick uh, and hopefully um, give a pretty clear picture of how it's working now. Um, so what I have here is um, the Linux source tree here um, checked out to um, 3.12.8 um, with one small patch on top remove the plus sign from the kernel release if you make a commit or you have a dirty repository on top of a tagged release it adds a plus sign to the end which makes it to where you can't um, load the kernel module because the kernel name doesn't match so I went into the script that adds that plus sign and removes it but um, that shouldn't be needed in the future um, other than that it's just a 3.12.8 release I also have a Fedora 20 virtual machine over here running uh, the kernel that I built ahead of time um, running 3.12.8 um, so over here I, I have I also build it with the object tree um, in a different directory, so the objects are, are uh, in a different directory here under OBJ. So, um, first thing to do is um, build any objects that are going to change as a uh, result of your patch with the F functions, uh, F function sections, and F data sections options. Uh, for the compiler. So right now, um, in the future, there will be a script to determine which object files have changed as a result of the patch. Um, and Josh has already written that script, so I just needed to adapt it for what's going on now. But I'm going to do those steps manually because it uh, one because I can't do it automatically, and two because it sh shows what's happening under the covers, which I find is interesting. Um, so we're going to build this with this command here. So we're setting the kernel C flags, setting those two things, and we're going to build the meminfo.o object, which is the one that's changed by our patch. If we want to take a look at the patch real quick, that's uh, here, and it just adds print k hello there whenever someone cats the um, slash prox slash meminfo. Um, so it's pretty easy to test and not that invasive. Good for proof of concept. So we know that meminfo.o is going to change, so we are going to build meminfo.o. Well, it's already been built. That's just for the sake of delete it. All right, so now we have that. We're going to copy that object out of the object tree into the kpatch directory just for now to make it simple. Um, and this is the base object before the patches uh, has been um, applied. So we'll do that. Now we'll go ahead and apply the patch. Start this over then. Uh, again. Okay, we're going to rebuild the object. This is the base object. I had the patch applied to the tree before. Um, so now we're going to copy it into kpatch, apply the patch. We can see that mem info has changed. We can see the patch is applied, so we're going to rebuild again the meminfo.o with the patch, and then we're going to copy that into the kpatch directory as .o.patched. Okay, so now we've got our changed object. Go back into the kpatch directory, so, and there's our two objects, kminfo.o and, and meminfo.o.patched. 
So for um, if we look at the directory structure here, you can see there's not a whole lot of files in here. Um, case patch files it contains the uh, contributing files to the actual patch kernel module. This is the kpatch base kernel module, the core one that loads the patch modules. Um, scripts are going to be um, the, the scripts that will eventually exist to do all this automatically and hide it from the user. And then tools are the tools that I wrote in C um, to do different things. So if we go here and we do a make, then it makes our tools for us. Uh, this will add the patches section to the uh, diff object once it's created. This creates that diff object and then this one links the VM Linux symbols into the symbol table of the um, nearly final object. And we'll go over those. And then kpatch files. We have the uh, this little linker file here. Uh, the hook, kpatch hook file is just a skeleton uh, kernel module here that calls kpatch register for the particular module and re registers the patch with the core kpatch module. Um, so let's uh, let's first of all build the kernel module, which is easy. Go in here, make, done. Now we have kpatch.ko, which is the core kernel module that will load the patch modules. If we come down here. Whoop, we can use our tools and do and create the diff object. So it take this command takes the two versions of the objects, um, and we run that, and it does a check for reachable sections, which I can go into more detail later about um, how the diff function uh, at a section level creates a dependency tree and then goes back through that tree, um, starting at changed function symbols, and make sure that all of the sections that have changed are also reachable from a changed function symbol. Since we're using ftrace, anything that, any change that isn't descended from a function change can't be patched by kpatch right now. Um, and that's changes to static data structures and um, things like that. So there are checks in there to um, ensure that we don't say that we can patch something that we can't. And it does a dependency check there that's what the all sections are reachable is. Um, and then it detected that the meminfo proc show has changed, which was correct. So if we go in here and take a quick look, uh, if we do a read elf on the, so that, that command that we just ran generated this output kpatch gen. And we can see here that we've got um, our changed function, and then all of the symbols that was re that were referenced by its rela section. So, if we come up here to the sections, you can see that there is a text in rela section specific to the memmfo proc show function, and so that means that uh, two things: one, that the function code for meminfo proc show is at offset zero inside this section. So we don't have to worry about um, uh, changing rela offsets um, because they're all offset at zero, which is great. Um, this is courtesy of the f functions section um, option that we passed into the compiler. Um, down here, so th these are all the symbols that were referenced by the rela section of the changed text section. So you can see that they're all um, undefined right now because they're not locally defined and therefore they're global and undefined. And some of these will change later. Um, okay, I think that's all I wanted to show here. So um, the next thing we do is we run another tool in the output gen file um, called add patches section. And that will go through and look for the this in the symbol table, look for changed local functions and add two new sections, dot patches and dot rela patches um, that are both that are used by the kpatch core module to determine what the old address for that function was and what the new address is now. Um, 
the kernel will relocate this kernel module somewhere we don't know where and so that um, is what the dot rela dot patches section is for the linker will give us the address of the new function once it's loaded into the kernel so we'll go ahead and run that and it also requires um, VM Linux because it's got to look up the symbols in VM Linux so we do that and it tells us that it found the patched function and its address in VM Linux is here um, it also tells us the length because the kpatch core module needs to know um, the range of instruction addresses for the changed function for its safety check to ensure that no thread um, is currently in that function. So if we do a read elf on it now, let's just look at the sections. You can see that we've got two new sections here, patches and rela patches. Um, and if we do a full output, we can see the relocation for dot rela dot patches, and it's going to fill in into the dot patches section the address of meminfo proc show the new version once it's loaded into the kernel. So the next step is going to kpatch files and if we go into the make file here you can see that the kpatch objects include that hook which is that uh, kernel module shim code the linker module which will give us the uh, beginning and end address of the dot patches section and the output gen file. We can take a quick look at that kpatch LDS. It's just this. It gives us the start address of dot patches and then the end address of, of that section so that the kernel so that the kpatch core module can read out the table of patch of functions that need to be patched. So if we do a make here, we get our kpatch patch ko but you see a lot of linker warnings and these are um, symbols that are not not exported by the kernel but aren't locally defined either so they need to be resolved um, and that's what this last step does so if we go into tools you can see there's one last one link vm linux sims now this is what used to be done by the kpatch relas section and it was complicated and required lots of manual relocation but I since found that you can actually switch the global undefined symbols to locally defined absolute symbols in the symbol table and the kernel module linker is fine with that so we'll see what that looks like so if I come in here and go tools link and then uh, kpatch files and then get the kernel module and then it also needs VM Linux because it's got to look up the uh, addresses for all these symbols that the linker couldn't find. Uh, we do that, okay, and we see that uh, for global symbols, if it finds a global symbol, it um, all, it looks for the exported kernel symbol, which starts with underscore underscore k stir tab underscore the name of the function. If it finds it, then the kernel exports that function, and we don't have to worry about it. Uh, if it doesn't export the function, then we need to look up the address and pin it into the symbol table. So that's what's happening here. And if we do go back into oop, ah, K batch files, do a read elf on the kernel module itself. Then what we can see here is in the symbol table. You, f you see some functions like vmstat. This is a globally undefined function right now, and but it's exported by the kernel. So the kernel module linker will resolve this when we at kernel module load time. But there are some um, symbols like si swap info that are not exported by the kernel. And what link vm sims did was look up the address and pin it into the symbol table here and de define it as absolute. So you can see it did that for all these symbols. And if you go up into the relocation sections, you can see that those fixed addresses, these are all looked up in the symbol table anyway, but you can see how they are completing all the missing information in the rela sections. 
All right. So now what we can do is we've got both kernel modules now. So we can copy those over to the VM that I have waiting. All right. So now we're switching over to the VM. And so there are two kernel modules there. Um, you have to load kpatch.ko first. It's the core module and symbols, and there are symbols in it that are required by the kpatch-patch.ko. So we'll insert that one first. All right. If we do a dmessage tail, you can see well, there's nothing that that, that module uh, puts in. So we'll um, we'll load the patch module and just to demonstrate that uh, let me let me do what this is going to do um, the cat proc min info and then look at d message there's nothing added to the d message for that if we insert the k patch patch ko um, we do a d message should see something about the loading patch module here we go um, And then if we cat procman info again and do that, we see our patched message. So that's how it works.